Welcome back everyone! I thought in this lesson we could consolidate what we learned in the past few lessons and look at how to draw uh, the various models we talked about using the information that we can find in the periodic table. So for this example, um, I will be working using calcium. So calcium is over here. Calcium has an atomic number of 20 and a mass of a little bit over 40. So if we go to, so we have the same information over here. So as we learned before, the smallest number of the two, uh, sometimes it's positioned at the top, sometimes at the bottom, depending on the periodic table, this could vary. So it's important to know that the smallest number is the atomic number. If you recall, it represents the number of electrons, but more importantly, the number of protons that an atom may have. So this is the important part. But we know that an atom would have the same number of protons and electrons because it is neutral when it's taken as a standalone. Then we have the symbol or the name and then we have the atomic mass. And I would like to remind you that we round the atomic mass. So in this case, we'd be using 40 rather than 40.08. And this is measured in AMU, atomic mass units, or just U. Okay, so if we draw this according to Dalton's model, if you recall, Dalton's model was very simple. Essentially, he said that atoms look like spheres. This was not a good sphere. Let me do this over. Okay, this is not so bad. So this would be essentially an atom of calcium, according to Dalton. If you wanted to, you could even put the symbol inside. So that's Dalton's model. Thomson, if you recall, Thomson discovered the electron. So he said the atom is a big sphere, which has a positive value. Not a value, but essentially it's like positive dough. And inside the dough, we have some electrons scattered, okay? So the dough itself is positive. We tend to put a little bit of a plus sign in the center. Let me use a different color. So we tend to put a plus sign in the middle, but it doesn't really mean that it has a nucleus. All it means is that the atom itself as a whole is positive and the electrons are floating around in no particular order, okay? So that would be Thomson's model. Now, if we apply the same thing, same atom still, to uh, the Rutherford model. So how would Rutherford draw it? So Rutherford, what did he say? He said, he did the gold foil experiment, if you recall. So he said that there is a tiny nucleus in a center. So we need to draw the nucleus and we need to put the protons inside because he discovered the protons. Okay, so 20p plus, it's a little small, I'm sorry, and the rest of the atom is hollow, it's empty, right, there's a lot of space, and the electrons are scattered inside. So he knows that there are 20 electrons in there. So I could draw 20, which is going to be quite long, or I could just write the number 20. I will draw them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Okay, so that could be one way of doing it. Let me just get, get rid of this. So that could be one way of doing it. Another way would have been to say 20 protons and the nucleus, and then the rest of the atom is mostly empty, and then there's 20 electrons floating around. This is when you want to do it very quickly and you're being a little bit lazy. Okay, so this would be the simpler way. Your teacher probably would want you to do this. This is probably the better, the most accurate way of doing it. Okay, so this is Rutherford's model. Just a nucleus in the center with the protons inside and the electrons scattered around in no particular order. Now, if we draw the Rutherford model, if you recall, Rutherford said that there has to be orbits in order to explain why these electrons are not falling or being attracted to the nucleus. 
So we have still the 20 protons in the nucleus, but now we need to draw the orbits. So if I go back for a minute to the periodic table, calcium is in row number one, two, three, four, which means it has four energy levels or orbits or shells, okay? So if we go back here, I need to put four shells. Now, the simpler way of doing it, I could draw four circles, but it becomes very messy. So what we tend to do sometimes, and ask your teacher if you're allowed to do that before you, you, you do it, is to do one, two, three, four shells like this, okay? And now it has 20 electrons. I will subdivide the electrons. I'll explain to you in a minute how we know how many electrons are on each shell. So it would be two, eight, eight. Okay, this is not working. So it would be 20 protons in a nucleus. On the first shell would have two electrons. Second one, I would have eight. On the third one, I will have eight electrons. And on the last one, I will have two electrons, okay? And I just wanna point out, there are two electrons on the last shell. If you recall, we call these valence electrons. If I go back to the periodic table, we can validate our work. Well, calcium, is in column number two. It should have two valence electrons, right? And we said it's in row number four. So it should have four shells and two valence electrons. And that's exactly what we drew here. Okay, four shells, two valence electrons on the last shell. Now, what I need to explain to you is how we divide these electrons. This is not magic. I didn't come up with these numbers randomly. There is actually a rule to follow. So let's move on to the simplified atomic model. And I will explain to you how to come up with these numbers. So an atom normally looks like this, right? It can have, well, it has a nucleus over here and it has different energy levels. I have numbered these energy levels, one, two, three, and four. It can go up to seven, okay? We're not gonna go that far, but if you look at how many rows there are in the periodic table, if this is row number four, five, six, seven, there can be up to seven. Um, if there are more elements that were created in a lab, so artificially, I don't know, I think we're at 120, but I'm not quite sure. It could be that eventually there's going to be another row that will be added to the periodic table. So, so far we go, let's say, up to seven. You will not have to do that, but I'm just saying, you can go up to seven for now. So, we're going to stick to the first four rows. So, on the first row, on the first shell, sorry, you can put two electrons as a maximum. If you recall, I've mentioned before that it's a very small shell because it's very close to the nucleus. So we can't really put that many electrons on that one. It would be too crowded. So two electrons fit. On the second shell, we can put up to eight electrons. Third shell, up to 18 electrons. Fourth shell, up to 32 electrons. The rule is 2n squared. n is the number of the orbit. So on the first orbit, if we were to replace n by 1, we'd say n square, so 1 square, that's 1, times 2, gives me 2. So n is 3, 3 squared equals to 9, times 2, I can fit 18 electrons on the third shell, and on the fourth shell, so n is 4, 4 squared, 4 times 4 is 16, times 2, 32. I can fit maximum 32. Now, sometimes you're going to have problems. You don't necessarily have enough electrons to put 18 or 32. What do you do then? Let's say you cannot put 32. You're going to try to fit 18. If you don't have enough to fit 18, you're going to try and fit 8. Okay, I'm going to show you two examples. So let's stick to calcium for now. I will show you how this rule applies using calcium, but I'll show you a bigger like a uh, bigger atom after to show you how this uh, this applies for bigger bigger atoms. Okay, so 
and the nucleus, we have 20 protons. Now, in the Simplify Atomic Model, Chadwick added the neutrons. So if you recall, he said it can't be that the protons are not are not making the nucleus explode. If there were only protons, they would repel each other and they would blow up the nucleus. So he then added the concept of the neutrons. I showed you that if you take the mass minus the atomic number, we can determine how many neutrons there are because the mass is the sum of the protons and the neutrons. So 40, remember we round, 40 minus 20, that means that there are 20 neutrons as well in the nucleus. Okay, so the nucleus now contains 20 and 20. Shell number one. I'm going to put two electrons. So I have to put 20 electrons in total. If my nucleus contains 20 protons, that means my atom also has 20 electrons. So on the first shell, I can fit two. Okay, so I have, I'm just going to put it here, I have 20 electrons to fit. I certainly have enough to put two. So once I put those two, I'm left with 18. So on the second shell, I'm supposed to fit eight. Do I have enough? Yes, I do, because I have 18. Now, if I put eight, that means I'm left with 10 left to split on those two shells, right? On the third shell, we said we can technically put up to 18. I don't have enough to put 18. I only have 10. If I cannot put 18, what am I going to try? I'm going to try the previous maximum, which was 8. I do have enough to put 8. So I'm going to put 8. And how many am I left with at that point? 10 minus 8, I'm left with 2. So that means I'm going to have 2 electrons on the last shell. And it makes sense because, like we said, calcium is in column number two. It should have two valence electrons. Okay, so this works. So that's how we subdivide the electrons for uh, the simplified atomic model as well as the Rutherford Bohr model. Now let's look at another example, a bigger atom, just to show you again how to play around with those maximums. So let's say we go crazy. And we try, we try, well, let's try astatine. Okay, so astatine over here has an atomic number of 85 and a mass of 210. Okay, if I round over here, it's going to be 210. So 85 and 210 for astatine. Let's go back here. Let's extend this. So astatine. AT, we said 210, and I've already forgotten the other number. We said 85. Okay. All right, so let's extend. Okay, so we said that 85 is the atomic number. So that means 85 protons, 85 electrons and how many neutrons would it have so 210 i'm going to do it this live 210 minus 85 that gives me 125 okay so we have 125 neutrons so if i draw this 85 protons and 125 neutrons this is a huge atom right that's the nucleus. Now, how many shells does it have? Let's go and verify. So acetine would be in row six, and it should have seven valence electrons. Okay, so row six, let's do this. So row six, so one, two, three, four, five, six, and it should have seven valence electrons, okay? So hopefully we can add this up properly. Okay, so do I have enough to put two? Don't forget, I have to put 85. So I have to place 85. I'm now left with 83. If I put eight, 83 minus eight, I'm left with 75. 
Do I have enough to put 18? Certainly I have enough to put 18. Now, 75 minus 18, I'm left with 57. Do I have enough to put 32? Yes, I do. Okay, so 57 minus 32, I'm left with 25. Now, can I put 32? No. Can I put 18? Yes, I have enough to put 18 because I have 25 still left. So if I put, uh, sorry, 25 minus 18, I'm left with 7. And that makes sense because I'm supposed to have 7 valence electrons, right? Or astatine is supposed to have 7 valence electrons. Okay, so this works. So that's the way you're supposed to go about it. So that's it for the little review for the models. Hopefully this helped and was clear. If you have questions, as per usual, just you know, write a little something in the comments uh, below and I'll help you out. Have a good one, see you around.